Welcome to the DFSRB YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, and you can find me on Twitter at Razzle11Grinds. Going to take a look at some pitching for today, Monday, the 12th of June. We have a seven-game main slate. No idea why it's not just an eight-game main slate and starting at 540 Central Time, but uh, that's a decision that DraftKings made, and I assume FanDuel is very similar. Anyways, let's take a look at some pitching options. The two most likely cash game guys, or the guys that are the largest favorites on this slate, uh, I believe they're around minus 265-ish. Uh, Zach Eflin taking on the suddenly hot Oakland A's squad, which doesn't really worry me because they should... Uh, fall back to their normal offensive tendencies. Did face Oakland earlier this year. Uh, wasn't super sharp, but did get the win and put up 20-plus DK points. Now at 11K, uh, paying a premium for Eflin, but I think that's perfectly fine in this matchup. Uh, the other massive favorite is James Paxton. There's some potential rain in Boston. But from what I've read, it shouldn't impact the game all that much. Uh, we know Colorado's super weak. Missing CJ Crone and Chris Bryant. Uh, Blackman just went on the IL with a broken hand that he was playing through. Uh, Paxson has been sensational. Minus the start against the Angels. Massive favorite. Getting an extra day of rest as well. Uh, Paxson definitely going to be a popular choice. Logan Webb, I think he's in play for me. Um, was strong against St. Louis earlier. That start did, I believe, yeah, came at home, which isn't a shock. Webb has definitely been much better at home throughout his career. But the St. Louis squad, uh, the lineup is struggling a bit, or they're just struggling overall. Uh, they can't get anything going. So I think because of that, we need to consider Webb on the slate. Uh, he's not really a priority guy for me, but I think I would imagine I'd probably around 20%. I haven't seen any ownership projections. So, um, you know, my percentage may adjust throughout the day uh, based on those numbers. Bryce Miller. Started out his major league career phenomenally. Uh, hit a bit of a wall. The last two starts have been atrocious against the Yankees and then the Rangers. Uh, I look for him to bounce back a little bit in this spot. Uh, we know Miami isn't the most dangerous offense. One worry I do have is his K numbers have really dropped back down after that amazing debut. Um, so I would assume that I would prefer to end up on Webb. Uh, but Miller is a minus-125 favorite. The game total is just 7.5. Uh, it's actually clearly the lowest total game on the slate. Uh, just a reminder that game totals are one piece of the puzzle. It's not the end-all, be-all. Uh, but it gives us an idea and a starting point uh, for pitching. Speaking of the other side, he's used Lizardo. Uh, big fan of Lizardo. He's been pretty rough on the road. Uh, so there are some worries with his road starts. Uh, even though his last road start against LA, he was pretty strong. Uh, Seattle offense overall has been disappointing. So I might be more interested in Luzardo than Miller, despite Luzardo being the underdog. His K numbers are pretty consistent. Uh, I like his upside. He probably has a greater ceiling than Miller does. So I, I think I would lean Luzardo there. Strom openings too expensive for his new role. Luke Weaver, somebody that we have used recently. Uh, most likely not going to make my pool. Uh, kind of depends on what I envision the Kansas City lineup to be. Uh, if, for whatever reason, Kansas City tries to go really left-hand heavy, uh, I will be interested in Weaver because he has been a reverse splits pitcher 
for the majority of his major league career. Uh, we've talked about it previously in matchups. Uh, the St. Louis one, we were all about him uh, because St. Louis took out Goldschmidt, Arenado, and Contreras, I believe, in that game and replaced them with three left-handed hitters, uh, which made zero sense based on the analytics and the numbers. Uh, so depending on the Kansas City lineup, we could be could have some interest in Weaver, but right now I'm planning to leave him off of my pool. Uh, no thank you on Greinke. Libertor, maybe. He has not been strong in the last two outings. Uh, obviously, one came against a very difficult Texas squad. Uh, I think St. Louis messed things up, came up, made his 2023 debut at the Major League level and looked phenomenal. I know it was against Milwaukee, and they suck against left-handed pitching. Uh, but then they immediately moved him to the bullpen and yanked him around a little bit. So not a huge fan of that. But I don't mind left-handed pitching against San Francisco. So I think he's somebody that's going to be used in my pool. Not sure how heavy I want to go. Uh, Tommy Henry, probably not going to make my pool. He's been really good at home, so maybe that keeps him in play. Uh, Philadelphia does have a few left-handed bats that I think Henry can have success against, but I just don't really want to pick on Philadelphia with a mediocre to below average pitcher. Dane Dunning, probably going to make my pool. Uh, we do need guys, so like there isn't a ton of options on the slate. Uh, Dunning has been solid. Not really sure what's going on with his K numbers at home. Uh, 24 innings and just 9 Ks. Uh, I feel like that should fix itself some. But he is coming off of a start against St. Louis where he only struck out one in all three home runs. Hasn't showcased the gigantic ceiling by any means, but I think this is a decent spot for him. Uh, the Angels obviously can put up some runs, but we do need to find some guys. And I think he's one of the guys... You know, aside from the top spend-ups that can get it done for us. Uh, you know, we're pretty limited down here. I mean, I'm not using Caprillion against Tampa Bay. Don't think I really have any interest in Seabold, uh, even though he's been all right the last couple of starts. Um, I'll dig into his numbers a little bit later. Maybe he becomes an option, uh, but I doubt it right now. Uh, at least I don't, I don't want him to become an option. Uh, he is a massive underdog on the road. So uh, it doesn't really feel like a great spot for me to attack with a pitcher. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, you know, if you're playing the full day slate, with, that includes that 540 central time, uh, Charlie Morton becomes like the number one pitcher probably taking on the, the Tigers. But, um, you know, aside from that, we just don't really have a great pitching slate. So my goal is to go heaviest on the guys I do like um, and just hope that I can pinpoint a stack that isn't super expensive to get me there. Uh, that's going to be the one issue, you know, because if we go Paxton, oops, wrong button, we go Paxton and Eflin, you know, we're under $3,700 per player. Uh, to build out a stack, um, that becomes an issue if you want to take out like uh, oh, Lizardo and Paxton, um, you know, just under 3900 So, uh, I mean, can we really stack out, um, uh, say, Arizona? Um, you know, Arizona starting a lefty and going to a righty. I'm not really sure what to expect out of their lineup, um, but, you know, we go with this, 2900 per, uh, not as great, um, and it becomes even more difficult, you know, if you want to go with Texas, who I expect to be a lot of people's number one uh, stack on the slate, you know, if we go with that. It can't even do that. So, um, you know, it probably have to drop 
to Garver. Now we could barely afford it, maybe, um, depending on what outfielders are starting elsewhere. But it just doesn't feel right. Uh, maybe replace Nate Lau um, or Nate Nathaniel. Sorry, um, Tavares. Uh, now we have a little bit more, but as you can see, it becomes really difficult. Um, and then that means I'm guessing we can't even do, uh, can barely do F1 and Paxton. So gives you an idea kind of where we're at. Uh, some of the struggles that might happen when it comes to building. Uh, if you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, get that alert anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. If you want to join us, you get access to our tools uh, and our coaches through Discord and all of that good stuff. I'll put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off your monthly membership. And as always, best of luck, everybody.